it's a great feeling just to be alive. Uh, to know that we can come together again to worship God in spirit and in truth. Only he deserves it. You are worthy of it all, Lord. So we need to give you the glory. We thank God today that we can come together. As we open his word, we need to understand uh, how it is that God wants us to live. And he truly wants us to reflect his image in our lives to the glory of his name. I want to welcome you no matter where you are in the world, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, night, welcome. May God bless you richly as you and I listen to his word. Can we pray together? Father in heaven, we want to thank you for life for allowing us to be back again together. And now, Father, we pray that you would forgive us for sin, wash us, make us clean, and help us to be the kind of people you want us to be, so that in the end, not only would we go to heaven with Jesus, but that our lives would reflect your glory each and every day, regardless of circumstances, and then to be saved. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, welcome to all of you. Uh, today, I want to take on a subject called perseverance. Perseverance. Perseverance is like standing up regardless. Being able to hold on. You know, some people thought that once you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it was from there on in a walk in the park. Unfortunately, my friend, that's not the case. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the enemy becomes mad because, you see, he wants us to join him in hell. But the thing is, hell was only made for him and his angels, not for you and me. And so we are thankful, even though through our pilgrimage, we have to suffer a bit, that we can, by the grace of God, persevere and to be one with the Lord. And so today I want to cover some of that aspect of the Christian life and ask you to join me and follow me as we study God's word together. My first passage of scripture is found in the book of Luke chapter 18. Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8 and it begins by saying and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, my friend, we need to get to understand. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Now, that doesn't mean that you, all, you are always on your knees 24-7. You can't go to work. You can't eat. You can't do anything but pray. No. Even as you work, even as you're walking, even as you're in your bed, you can be praying. You could be talking with God. Because you see, friend, talking with God, you don't need a microphone. Talking to God, you don't need anybody to come and interpret for you. That's the job of the Holy Spirit of God. And so we can talk with God all the time. So the Bible says, he told them, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not fall out. 
But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not God avenge his own elect? God, Jesus is drawing a contrast. Here is a judge who couldn't care less with either God or man. And yet he chooses to do something good for someone. Jesus now is drawing the contrast between that godless judge and a loving heavenly father. If this godless judge would do this kind deed for this widow, how about God himself? Shall he not avenge his own elect? Are you counted as one of the redeemed of God? Now remember, God didn't choose some people and not you. Uh -uh. God doesn't love me any more than he loves you. He loves us all just the same. Regardless to who you are, God loves you. He wants to save you. But we need to do it according to him, not the way we want. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we, 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 we listen to the voice of Jesus saying, look, we cry, the, the, the saints cried day and night unto God. Though he bear long with them, I, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. Will he find faith? Are we going to be faithful? Are we going to be true to God? Will we remain in connection with him? Will we have a relationship with God? See, friend, it's not just about going to heaven. It was a matter of just making it to heaven and not having a relationship with God. When you get there, it's going to be boring. You've got to have a relationship with him. You know, if your betrothed were to take you to a huge mansion, beautifully designed, and you have the best of cars to drive. You got in there, and then you scarcely saw your betrothed. Only from time to time, maybe once every other weekend, or once a month, I mean, you had all that you wanted to eat or drink, all you wanted to wear, but you scarcely saw him or her. What kind, what kind of a relationship would that be? Would you feel yourself fulfilled? No. You want a relationship. A relationship that builds love. God, Jesus is asking, when he comes, Will he find faith? That's why he asked somebody one time, do you believe that I can do this? If we believe in him, my friend, there's nothing that he won't do for you and me. And sometimes when the preacher says things like that, immediately our minds go to money or immediate healing. Think about your relationship with God. Think about being close to him. Think about the reassurance he gives because of who he is. So we move on. I'd like to take a look at the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. And it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance, holding on 
and supplication for all saints. Listen to me, my friend. Prayer is one of the biggest, greatest elements of the Christian faith. We cannot move on or build without faith. It is something that we need, something that we should cherish, asking God to build or strengthen our faith in him. Very important. And whilst we are praying that, we need to persevere. We need to hold on. Therefore, even as we do this, don't think just, just of yourself, but of all the saints. In the book of James, tonight, uh, this, this evening, this afternoon, this morning, book of James, I think it's James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4 and verse 12. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4 and verse 12. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Now you say, what? Why should I be happy when I fall into temptation? Now listen to this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith worketh patience. In other words, there's virtue in your perseverance, holding on. But let patience have her work, her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and complete, wanting nothing. Amen. Yes, my friend, ours is, 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 is such a life that we need to get to the point where we realize that even through temptation, even through uh, those times when, when we seem to be battered to and fro, there's the song that I've heard in the past. The anchor holds, though the ship is battered, even though the sails are torn, the anchor still holds. The anchor, ladies and gentlemen, is our faith in God. Our faith in God. Let us hold on to him. And that by his grace we recognize that all things are possible. One time Jesus said, you know, some of these things with man is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man or woman who endures or gets through temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promise to them that love him. My friend, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going through this battered life for nothing. As pilgrims going through a strange land, we are not suffering for nothing. The time will come when the Apostle James tells us here that for when we are tried, and we get through our temptations, we shall receive a crown of life. Amen. Don't you want that, my friend? In exchange for all of your suffering and pain and heartaches and loss, wouldn't you want the crown of life? I do. And by the grace of God, I am expecting to get it. Not because... I deserve it. No. I can't buy it either. But by God's grace, 
You know, it's, it's always nice to remember Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace are ye saved. Hallelujah to God. We are saved by his grace, not because of what we do, not because of what we say, not because of the places we go, not because of the things we eat or drink. No, it is only by grace. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. We can't boast of our salvation as if it is something that we have earned. No, it is a gift of God. And so, friend, think about those trials as you're going through it. Some of you are going through trials right now. Some of you perhaps are in your hospital bed. Some of you have your, 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 your palm under your chin right now wondering what is your next move. Oh, my friend, I can, I can suggest strongly to you what your next move should be. Turn to Jesus. Turn to him. Because he says, for as many as receive him, to them gives he the power, the authority, the privilege, the right to become sons and daughters of God. Don't you want to be a son of God or a daughter of God? Yes, you do, because that makes you a prince or a princess, and that's how come you earn your crown. Praise God. And so in the book of Galatians, Chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, and uh, we're looking at verse 9, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, Galatians 6, verse 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Sometimes, you know, as Christians, we render good to other people. You've done good to your neighbor. You've done good to someone perhaps you don't even know. You've done good to others. And yet, nothing seemed to, to, to come good as a reward. Oh, my friend, don't give up. Don't think that God is not watching. His angels are taking record of what you and I are doing. And so it says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You see, my friend, the wages of the righteous may not be immediate, but Jesus says, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give unto every man, righteous or wicked, whatever he had done in the flesh. And so, my friend, you can count on Jesus to keep his word. And in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 3, to five Romans chapter five verses three to five it says and not only so but we glory in tribulation also oh, oh, oh. somebody is saying why should I glory in tribulation when I'm hurting and aching and suffering and suffering loss and you know there was a day when the apostle Paul and some of his friends were thrown in jail. And somewhere close to midnight, the jailers heard them singing and shouting, praising the Lord. And the jailer could not understand what this was all about. How could you be in chains? How could you be hurting so much and yet praising God? It is said uh, during the Dark Ages how especially uh, the Caesars, would put up the Christians on poles alongside the road leading up into the city and would lit them afire. And instead of screams and shouting, they were singing songs 
because they knew they were going home. Oh, do you think you're going home, friend? I know we are on our way home. And so don't give up because the Lord God is with you. Listen, listen to this. It says, Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Sometimes, sometimes in our walk with God or even in our community, in our surroundings, we need more patience. We, we, we fly off the cuff so easily. We need patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Oh, in all your struggles, if you keep faithful, what comes as a result is patience. And then that patience gives us experience. That experience gives us hope. Oh yes, that hope, my friend, leads our hearts unto God. And so don't you ever give up, but persevere. In, in, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 says, okay, let me get that for you. Now, uh, we got Hebrews 9. Let's see if we can get Hebrews 10.36, which says, For ye have need of patience. Again, that's the third time we're reading about patience tonight. You have need of patience. I have need of of patience. After ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. See, my friend, let's not misunderstand God's word. John 3, 16 says, he loves the world. For that reason, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes would not perish, but have eternal life. But God wants to have a love affair with you and me. He wants a love relationship with you and me. He wants to know that we love him. And so Jesus says, hey, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yeah. Don't, don't just do what you want because God is watching you and me. He wants us to, to be patient. He wants us to persevere. And therefore, my friend, don't give up. Here's what Jesus says in John. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33. John, chapter 16, verse 33. Let's see if we can get it. It's Jesus is speaking here. And he says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Some of you right now, this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening, or tonight, some of you are brokenhearted. Some of you don't think that you can bear much longer what's going on with you. Some are even considering suicide. Some are asking, where is God when I need him? Oh, my friend, Jesus is saying, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, a peace that passes all understanding. 
a peace that you and me don't quite understand, but it delivers us <clears throat> from anxiety. In the world, Jesus is speaking, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah to God. He has overcome, my friend. And the reason why he overcame is because he wants to buy you and me from sin and the sinful one so that he can take us home with him. That's why in John 14 he says, don't be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I won't lie to you. A day is going to come, my friend, when all what you are having to go through right now is going to pass away. And Jesus is going to present you with a new name, with a crown, with joy, with peace you are going to become more and more a child of God. And so, my friend, he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yes, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, here's what the Bible says. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. There are people watching us, but that's not the point that I want to focus on today. Let's lay aside, the Bible says, every weight. Those things that that, that, that we seem to carry that bothers us so much. We can't even carry them, but it seems like they are attached to our bodies and we can't get rid of them. Well, today Paul is saying, yes, we can. Let's lay them aside and let us, and, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Oh, my friend. You know, when I was a young man, I did a lot of things I should not have done. Today, as I get older, I realize that I can look to God and say, thank you, Lord, for delivering me from those past sins. And friend, never boast about the things that you have learned to overcome. You can't boast of it because it is God who took you from it. It may have taken many, many years as he did with me. But were it not for him, I would have been stuck in my sin and perhaps dead. And so we need to recognize that it is God who delivers us from sin. Lay aside every weight. Those things, you know, look, listen. That nice car that you've been wanting for years. The car is not bad to have. It's not bad to have a nice bank account. It's not bad to have a nice home. It's not bad to have a nice family, a nice wife, or handsome husband. It's not bad to be able to look out your, 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 your back door and see how widespread uh, your property is. Nothing wrong with that per se. But it seems like because of your desire in having it, it, it presents a stumbling block. That's all you can see. But my friends, the Bible wants us to know 
even those things are temporary. They're transient. They come and go. When you have all of those things, supposedly, supposing you were to have the car, the house, the property, the bank account, when that day comes and you have that heart attack, as I've had in the past, and you do not recover from it, what then? What do you do with all of what you had? Someone else takes it. It doesn't go with you. Job said, naked did I come into the world, and naked shall I go back. That's how it is, friend. Except that with the Christian, even though he goes back naked, he looks forward to a day when he will see Jesus and having made a mansion for you and for me, we are going to go into paradise and live eternally with him. And so I read that again. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Fourth time, patience. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yeah, we have a race before us. Let us run it with patience. Remembering. Why with patience? Because the race is not for the swift. Because you're asking, why run a race with patience? You have to run a race with speed. Not this race. This race is not for the swift. But for him who endures. He who outlasts the enemy. She who outlasts the enemy. That's why we run with patience the race that is set before us. Yes. And so, my friend, we want to take another look quickly because our time is really flying. In the book of James, I think, we're going we're gonna to skip this one. Let's look at Revelations chapter 2, verse 10. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 10. Revelations 2, verse 10, it says, Fear none of those things, Jesus is speaking, which thou shalt suffer. Are you listening, friend? Fear none of those things that you should suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful until death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will suffer. Some of you will be cast into prison. Some of you will be persecuted. Some of you will be beaten to death. Christians will suffer all kinds, all myriads of, 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 of pain and, 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 and persecution. But Jesus is saying, please listen to me. I want you to know you need to be faithful unto death because at the end of it, I will give you, he says, a crown of life. Amen. Amen. By the way, friend, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 
beautiful passage. It says here, my friend, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Let me read that again. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, my friend, the Apostle Paul is reminding us those things that we suffer, and we suffer greatly. Those things that you're having to go through. Some of you have lost a loved one, your, your spouse, your son, your daughter. Someone that was close to you, your sister, your brother. Someone you held dearly. Some of you perhaps on the stock market, things are not as bright as you thought it might have been. You're just losing. But the Bible is telling me this evening, don't, don't you think that your temptation is unique? What you are going through right now is not unique to you. In other words, it's not you alone that is going through it. There are other people just like you going through the very same thing. Now, I'm sure you won't say you don't care. In fact, I want to believe that that kind of alleviates the pain somewhat, knowing that you are not alone. By the way, we're never alone. Yeah? Yeah? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, who, but God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God is not going to give you the world atlas to carry on your shoulder when he knows you can barely carry a baseball bat. He won't let that happen to you. So the Bible says, he is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above all, above that ye are able, but with the temptation, hallelujah, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Hallelujah to God. You tell me that when you are suffering and hurting, God is on vacation. No, he isn't. He is right there with you. And so you are, then pastor, why doesn't he deliver me? God knows what is best for you and me. Our children ask us for certain things and we think we know what is best for them. Even when we can afford to give it to them, sometimes we say no. And if they continue to, 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 to get after you about it and ask why, I've heard some parents say, just because I said so. Because even if you try to explain to them, they won't understand. God is there with you, my friend. He knows what your needs are. Sometimes, even as you're praying, I want you to know that God saw what's going on with you a long time ago. See, the Bible says God is omniscient. He knows the end from the beginning. And so he has already made a way of escape. Praise God. Praise God. And so, I want you to know, friend, our Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, for we know that all things worketh together for good to those who love God and who are called according 
to his seed. In Romans chapter 15, Romans 15, verse 13, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, now the God of hope, coming to an end, now the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God wants us to have that hope. Faith builds patience and experience and hope. That blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, my friend, I know the world says this is something that we have been preaching about for centuries, for millennia, and it has not happened. One of these days it will, and when it does, I tell you, I will be shouting hallelujah. And so... The penultimate passage of scripture is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading verses 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight, Paul says. I have kept the faith. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Hallelujah. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul concluded that by God's grace, he had done all that he could have done. By the grace of God, he had lived for God the best he could and was confident of the mercies of God and therefore concluded, I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Therefore, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But he says, hey, not just for me, but for all those who love the apparent or second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we conclude with 1 Peter chapter 5. Happens to be one of my wife's favorite passages. 1 Peter. Chapter 5. Verse 7. First Peter, it says, my friend, casting all your cares upon him. Why? For he careth for you. God loves you, my friend. All the things that seem to burden you, that causes anxiety, that causes loss, that causes pain, that causes suffering. Cast it at the feet of Jesus. Learn to let him handle it. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my burden, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Would you come to Jesus? He loves you, my friend. Give him all your cares. He will take care of it for you. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for being so good to us. And now... We pray 
Take away sin. Take away those things that we so deeply desire. Have mercy, we pray. Fill us with your presence. Give us faith. Give us perseverance. Give us experience. Give us patience. Give us hope. And help us to be made ready for your coming kingdom. For we pray it in the worthy name of Jesus and for his sake. And the church around the world said, Amen. God bless you, my friend. I hope this message was a blessing for you. May he truly be with you and cause his face to shine upon you, both now and forever. Amen.